Welcome to the Kurzgesagt Scanner Lab, where we investigate all things great and small. Please keep hands and feet inside the lab at all times. You may use the yellow bar to adjust your position until you're comfortable. 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 Oh, sorry about that. I've been on standby for... I mean, I've been hard at work doing mm, stuff. Anyway, you must be on a tour of the Kurzgesagt labs, huh? Well, lucky you, you've wandered into the best lab by far. Let me show you around. Check out the blue capsule on the left. This is my greatest invention, a way to overcome the laws of physics. Shrinkagen. If you add it to things, they become teeny tiny. And I managed to invert it so I can also scale things to giant size. It can get a bit tricky when you overdo it, but 70% of the time it works every time. Oh, almost forgot. There should be a tablet with a yellow hat. That's the lab tab. It works as a travel guide for this lab. It records as I talk and makes suggestions about what to do next. You can use your thumbstick to scroll and go between pages while you're holding it. Go ahead, try it out. Okay, check out the machine on your right, the one with the big handle in the middle. This is the Scalevator. It lets you grow and shrink this whole lab so you can visit other realms and see the worlds within worlds around you for yourself. It can also take the lab outside. Let me demonstrate. Wow, it's good to be out again. So much data to be collected. Hmm. But I'm sure you can't wait to try out my invention. Do you see a boxy white tool? There it is, the multi-tool. The first thing it does is analyze things. Hold down the trigger and point it at, let's say, that rubber duck. Good. Despite their name, rubber ducks are generally made of plastic, not rubber. But it will still make a perfect guinea pig. To collect it, you'll need one of these red capsules with a big window in front. I use shrinkagen to store the tools when they're not needed. Keeps the lab looking tidy. Put that in the multi-tool. Now, point the multi-tool at the rubber duck and press the trigger. Yes. Ah, I've missed this. Let's scale it up and make a huge rubber duck. Now, press the button to send the giant rubber duck into the world. Well done. Now, to take a look at the new giant duck, we will get huge ourselves. Go to the other machine, the Scalevator, and set its lever to the mountain icon. Then, press the button when you're ready to see what this lab can really do. Welcome to the mountain realm. You are so big now that the city looks like a bunch of toys below you. Speaking of toys, I have one more thing to show you. Let's take this ducky for a ride. Grab the controller with the little antenna. This is the duck drone. Duck can reach and manipulate things outside while you stay safe and cozy in the lab. It has lots of useful tools. This one, the claw, grabs when you press the trigger on that controller. Use it to pick up the rubber duck, then we'll do a little obstacle course. You could fly out to, hmm, let's say that lighthouse out on the lake and take a turn around it. No, not another problem. My sensors are showing a substantial shrinkage and leakage in the city. The wave must have hit the storage tanks. Who knows what happened this time? No, I refuse to be shut down again. Please, you need to help me. We need to get down there now.
Wow, they are marvellous. I mean, horrible. The sensor report says that just like I feared, it's an inverted shrinkogen malfunction. Basically, the shrinkogen has merged with the app. The multi-tool is in collecting mode right now. If you want to analyse something, you'll need to remove the capsule from the multi-tool. It's not a multitasking tool. I don't think the drone can help us against those giant ants. Cardboard and foam? What an odd flavour for a donut. Do you see the spikes on their back? And the ones trying to cut out parts of buildings? These must be leaf cutter ants. They're called that because they cut and collect bits of plants. Let's focus on gathering the ants in one place while you collect enough shrinkogen to shrink them down. This one is a miner, one of the smaller leaf cutter ants. Leaf cutters live in complex societies where e this is a major leaf cutter ant. Majors are the biggest of the four subgroups of leaf cutter ant workers. They're basically the soldiers of the colony. They this is a bacteriophage or bacteria eater. I can't believe the wave washed it all. This is a major leaf cutter ant. Majors are the biggest of the four subgroups of leaf cutter ant workers. They're basically the soldiers of the colony. They point each other towards threats that need taking care of. When one major signals a threat to the rest of the group, the troops come rushing in. This is a major leaf cutter ant. Majors are the biggest of the four subgroups of leaf cutter ant workers. They're based a volcano. That belongs to another Kurzgesagt lab. The wave must have dragged it here. Quick, put a capsule in the multi-tool and collect it so I can return it. It must have been hit by the leak as well. The good news is, this now move the yellow lever to the correct scale and press the button to ex- Good. I sent that back to the energy lab and saved the shrinkogen. It was probably not the only one. If you can find the others, we can collect enough shrinkogen for the ants. This must have been left over from the wave earlier. Too bad for us. It doesn't seem to have damaged the ants. They have water repellent surface. This one is a minor, one of the smaller leaf cutter ants. Leaf cutters live in complex societies where every cast has a different task. Miners forage for food and leaves to bring back to the nest. This is a major leaf cutter ant. Majors are the biggest of the four subgroups of leaf cutter ant workers. They're basically the soldiers of the colony. They point each other towards threats that need taking care of. When one major signals a threat to the rest of the group, the troops come rushing in. More inverted shrinkogen. Return this to its original size so we can harvest the shrinkage. Well done, I sent that back to its home lab. Keep an eye out for more things like this. They may be our ticket to shrink these ants. So we have two groups of ants here. The miners, which are responsible for finding food and resources, and the majors, which protect the colony from threats. Maybe we can use that behavior to our advantage. Let's see how they act in their natural environment, the insect realm. Off to the insect realm. Major ant mandibles are strong enough to even take on large enemies like anteaters and armadillos, even when they're regular size. Leaf cutter workers are actually divided into four subgroups based on their sizes. The smallest ones are minims, and then this ant must be the queen ant. 
It's much bigger than the rest, even bigger than the majors. Plus, it has a crown on its head. Another duck? Shouldn't you be at your own lab? And it's gone. Major ant mandibles are strong enough to even take on large enemies like anteaters and armadillos, even when they're regular size. Look, there's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting food and leaving a trail of pheromones to tell the others where to go to get more. If you had some of those... This anthill is probably where those giant ants used to live. Anthills are complex constructions with many chambers connected by tunnels. Like the ants, each chamber has a function like being a nursery, waste disposal, fungi garden or keeping aphids. There's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting food and leaving a trail of pheromones to tell the others where to go. Look, there's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting leaf cutter workers are actually divided into four sub. Major ant mandibles are strong enough to even take on large enemies like anteaters. Look, there's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting food and leaving a trail of pheromones to tell the others where to go to get more. Look, there's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting food. Leaf cutter workers are actually divided into four subgroups based on their sizes. The smallest ones are minims, and then there are the minors, medias, and majors, which are the largest. A minim can be so much smaller than a major, you'll need to take the capsule out if you want to analyze things. This ant must be the queen ant. It's much bigger than the rest, even bigger than the majors. Plus, it has a crown on its head. Back to the human realm we go. I don't think the ant is just splashing around, it's actually trying to pick up some water. At their regular scale, ants can carry drops of water because the surface tension of a tiny drop is enough to hold it together, like a little elastic ball. But at this scale, water behaves, well, watery, and the mandibles of the giant ants just glide through it. Look, there's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting food and leaf, leaf cutter workers are actually divided into four subgroups based on their sizes. The smallest ones are minims, and then there are the minors, medias and majors, which are the largest. Pheromones are essential for ants to communicate. It's a little like a scent trail, except instead of sniffing with noses like we would, ants pick up pheromones via receptors on their antennae, and those pheromones can convey information like threat, or donut. Pheromones are essential for ants to communicate. It's a little like a scent trail, except instead of... This anthill is probably where those giant ants used to live. Anthills are complex constructions with many chambers connected by tunnels. Like the ants, each chamber has a function, like being a nursery, waste disposal, fungi garden, or keeping aphids. A telescope. It's amazing what you can do with a set of curved mirrors in a tube.
Look at this plane. Passenger seats really are getting smaller and smaller. Look, there's one of the minor ants doing its job, collecting food and leaving a trail of pheromones to tell the others where to go to get more. If you had some of those pheromones, you could lead the minor ants wherever you wanted. This anthill is probably where those giant ants used to live. Anthills are complex constructions with many chambers connected by tunnels. Like the ants, each chamber has a function, like being a nursery. This ant must be the queen ant. It's much bigger than the rest, even bigger than the majors. Giant ants need giant pheromones. We should have enough shrinkage by now to scale them up. Now you need to deploy them, so again, push the yellow button on the opticizer. Great. Now, Duck will be able to help you lay your own human-sized pheromone trail. should have just enough trail pheromones to attract all the minor ants. Time to show you another feature of the drone, the vacuum beam. Drive the drone over to those pheromones and pull the trigger to suck them up. Now you can use the drone to lay a path. Pull the trigger to spray pheromones at the ground. Try to lead them to the intersection in front of the donut shop. That seems like a safe place for them to gather until we can shrink them. That's a good spot. Just do that a few more times to make a path from the end. Good. You've got the start of a trail. Almost there. One more spray should do it. That's the minor ants gathered up. Now we just need to get the major ants together so we can shrink them all with one good blast of shrinkagen. Let's go back to the insect realm and see what we can find to attract the major ants. Major ants respond to threats to the colony. Other ants can create a burst of alarm pheromones that says, there's something scary here, and the majors will come deal with the problem. Oh, nice, a banana for scale. Great, that was all the shrinkagen to be collected around here. Now, let's get those ants all together so we can shrink them. The major ants seem awfully interested in this bottle. There was another ant in there. It must be releasing alarm pheromones that are making the major ants react. Unfortunately, even though you freed it from the bottle, it's still stuck in that water drop.
That should have had some effect. Let's go to the human realm and see. Forces that make water molecules stick together are strongest at the edge of a water drop. So as soon as the drop is so big there's more middle than edge, the water drop breaks apart. These alarm pheromones indicate that this ant sees us as a huge threat. It's trying to call in reinforcements to protect the colony. And here come the major ants, ready to eliminate the threat, which in this case is us, so you might want to hurry. We have plenty of shrinkagen to take care of all these ants. Just grab that other capsule, put it in your multi-tool and blast those ants. This is a major leaf cutter ant. Majors are the biggest of the four subgroups of leaf cutter ant. Pheromones don't translate directly to words, but the general message of this one is major threat this way. This one is a minor, one of the smaller leaf cutter ants. Leaf cutters living this one is a minor, one of the smaller leaf cutter ants. Leaf cutters live in complex societies where every caste has a different task. Miners forage for food and leaves to bring back to the nest. Perfectly regular sized leaf cutter ants going home to their perfectly regular sized colony. I'd say that's a job well done, but let's make a quick trip up to the mountain realm to make sure we got them all. Well, we got all the ants, but now there's... Is that a tardigrade? That's incredible. We have to go see it up close. Take us back to the human realm. It's a huge tardigrade. I love normally this tardigrade would be about 500 microns long. Or around. They really didn't need to bring out the tanks for this. The tardigrade doesn't mean any harm. Thankfully, it looks like normally this tardigrade would be about 500 microns. We don't have enough shrinkagen to shrink this tardigrade yet. Until we do, see, the ice cream vendor knows that this used to be one of those barricades until the tardigrade stepped on it. There's likely to be a lot more rubble around if you don't find a way to slow it down.
Normally, this tardigrade would be about 500 microns long, or around the size of a grain of sand. Even though they're so small, it seems like the shrinkage and leak is still wreaking havoc on the other labs. That's more tidying up for us, but also more shrinkage in for the tardigrade. What are all you lab dogs doing out here? Shoot, go away. That's a neutrophil, the enthusiastic killers in your bloodstream that live to take out intruding bacteria. Ah, caffeine. Probably one of humanity's favorite molecules. Strange matter. No, really, that's what it's called. Never mind the red light now, giant tardigrade trumps traffic, see? The ice cream vendor knows they're perfectly safe. See? The ice cream vendor knows they're perfectly safe. This used to be one of those barricades until the tardigrade stepped on it. There's likely to be a lot more rubble around if you don't find a way to slow it down. They really didn't need to bring out the tanks for this. The tardigrade doesn't mean any harm. Thankfully, it looks like they're just waiting for now. They really didn't need to bring out the tanks for this. The tardigrade doesn't mean any harm. Thankfully, it looks like they're just waiting for now.
Tardigrades are aquatic creatures. They're often called water bears. Even the ones that live mostly on land. Tardigrades are aquatic creatures. They're often called water bears. Even the ones that live mostly on land have a thin film of water over their bodies. It helps them feel cosy and stay active. We are inside that puddle now. Water. These tardigrades are just waking up from tun state at the moment. Lots of things can cause a tardigrade to go into its tun state. Heat, cold, dehydration, high pressure or lack of oxygen. These ones might have been dehydrated until that wave came along. Green algae like this are an important source of oxygen and food for other organisms that live in water. This is a single-celled organism called a diatom, sometimes called jewels of the sea. These tiny organisms generate a big chunk of all the oxygen produced on Earth. A grain of rice, a staple food for roughly half the world's population. Nematodes are one of the few animals which can resist dehydration to similar levels as tardigrades. They can also get rid of most of the water in their cells and come back to life just normal. The tun state is a really special power. When they're like this, Tardigrades have been known to survive six times the pressure at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, the deepest part of the ocean, and the vacuum of space. Is that the new veggie patty from the health lab? Tardigrades are like little tanks, but when they don't like the environment, they go into an... It moss is a great hiding place for tardigrades because it traps water. A giant moss to snack on will surely distract our big buddy from those barricades for a while.
Green algae like this are an important source of oxygen and food for other organisms that live in water. Rotifers are also able to defend themselves against dehydration. When they feel the water is getting scarce, they pull a similar trick to the tardigrades and curl themselves up as the water discharges from their bodies, decreasing their volume greatly. Moss is a great hiding place for tardigrades because it traps water, provides shelter, and it's actually the inspiration for my favourite nickname for them, Moss Piglets. Moss is also one of their favourite snacks. Moss is a great hiding place for tardigrades because it traps water, provides shelter, and it's actually the inspiration for my favourite nickname for them, Moss Piglets. Moss is also one of their favourite snacks. Too bad we didn't bring a little ranch dressing. This will have to do. If we could get that giant tardigrade to go into its ton state, that should keep it under control for a while. We should go back to the human realm and see how we can calm our tank into a ball. Now then, there are lots of ways to make a tardigrade go into its ton state. High pressure, lack of oxygen, dehydration, heat, cold. If we had a tasty snack, you could use the drone to lure the tardigrade somewhere with one of those things. The claw on the drone is perfect for moving things around. Now, where should we lead the tardigrade? Maybe someplace cold? Come on, come on, take a bite. It's tasty, tasty moss. The cart isn't cold enough to chill the entire tardigrade. We can try drying it off instead. Anything around we can use. A huge hairdryer would be perfect. Or a bonfire. Tree. Hmm, bonfire would probably dry out the tardigrade, but live trees don't make very good firewood. Those bits of wood don't make a very good barricade anymore, but they could make a great fire. The heat would dehydrate the tardigrade, and at this distance, we wouldn't accidentally roast it.
The easiest way to get the tardigrade into its tun state is probably... Those bits of wood don't make a very good barricade anymore, but they could make a great fire. The heat would dehydrate the tardigrade, and at this distance, we wouldn't accidentally roast it. We have fuel for a fire, so technically all we need is a match, but that's boring. There are much cooler ways to create a spark. Let's swing by the molecular realm. Welcome to the molecular realm. Remember that fire needs fuel. Anything with both carbon and hydrogen atom oxygen is a key ingredient to fire. But regular oxygen molecules bouncing into things don't cause fires. If they did, we'd be in a lot of trouble. For the oxygen molecules to react with the fuel, we'll need more and stronger collisions. We need these oxygen molecules to speed up. The duck drone has just the perfect gadget. Fire needs fuel. Anything with both carbon and hydrogen atoms will burn if you... I originally made the drone's flagellum to help duck move around. With enough force, oxygen molecules are able to break down the bonds between molecules in the wood, releasing energy and light. Fire is chemistry and physics in action. These carbon dioxide molecules were formed in this combustion reaction. They'll come in handy when it's time to put the fire out. Why don't you collect some? Carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, so large quantities of it can get in between the fire and its fuel, cutting off the combustion reaction. A few molecule-sized molecules wouldn't be enough to put out a fire, but a few giant molecules will be. Those are waiting for us in the human realm whenever you're ready. Here it is. Bet you wish you had some marshmallows now. See the steam coming off the tardigrade? That's the film of water around its body evaporating. The scientists don't know everything about how the tardigrade tun state works yet, though tardigrades can use... Yep, it worked. Now we need to put the fire out. Fire turns oxygen and fuel into entirely new molecules. That's where this ash comes from. These carbon dioxide molecules were formed in this combustion reaction. They'll come in handy when it's time to put the fire out. Why don't you collect some? If you want to analyze something, you'll need to take the caption out if you want to analyze things. The scientists don't know everything about how the tardigrade tun state works yet, though tardigrades can use a certain kind of sugar to replace the water in their bodies, and that protects their internal structures.
just fly the drone over the fire and pull the trigger to release the CO2. Goodbye, little water man. Well, that was exciting, wasn't it? Now, let's get rid of that giant rubber duck. We don't want it reminding everyone who's caused all this trouble. Head to the mountain realm when you're done here. to clean up. Oh, what now? Ugh, it appears something large and slimy is oozing through town. Hmm. Back to the human realm we go. A very large protest. And it appears to be eating anything within reach. Hey, those lap ducks aren't up for grabs. Before we scale the protest down, we need to make it spit out all the stuff it swallowed. Go back to your lab before you get eaten too. This stretchy single-celled packet of slime is a protist. Protists are what we call things that aren't plants, animals or fungi. Kind of a none-of-the-above option. Usually you can... Uh, this puddle is probably where the protist came from. Most of them live in water. With just one cell and no means to reach it, it's best to live surrounded by water to begin with. Ugh, another Kortzkazak lab must have been hit by the shrinkogen leak. At least fixing these will give us the shrinkogen we need to shrink that protest. It keeps reaching for more. We need to make it spew out the stuff it's eaten. Let's observe it in its natural habitat and try to find a solution there. Take us to the bacteria realm. Welcome back to the bacteria realm, another protist like the big one. This species hunts, so their prey must have ways to defend themselves that we can harness. See if you can find something this protist likes to eat. This is an amoeba, another type of protist. You can tell because they have pseudopods, little bulges that kind of resemble feet. Oh look, that's the tardigrade we just shrank. Much better at this size, don't you think? Not all protists are hunters. Some like to hang out in algae like this and feast on them like cows on pasture. LED bulbs are more energy efficient than the old light bulbs. LED bulbs are more energy efficient than the old light bulbs. This is a diatom, another type of protist that does photosynthesis. Silica cell walls make them pretty solid. They're a tough nut for other protists to gulp down, but you can give it a try. Be careful to stay out of range of that neck, or the protist might decide to eat duck. I told you diatoms are tough. 
Ah, you found bacteria. These bacteria look humble compared to the... Ah, you found bacteria. These bacteria look humble compared to the protists, but they spread everywhere thanks to their clever survival. Let's see now. As you can see, these bacteria have an ingenious method of spreading. Once they're in the protist, they use its resources to multiply. As soon as there are many of them, they start poking holes in its membrane, which lets water in and eventually bursts the protist. This lets the bacteria escape out into the environment. So bacteria have ways to get out of protists again, even after they were eaten. Usually that doesn't end well for the protist, but we don't have to go that far. We just need to make the protist release its human-sized snack. Come on, let's go to the molecular realm to see how it works. We're in the molecular realm, but this time you'll get living in fresh water with a body filled with chemicals is a risky business. Protists have evolved to maintain a delicate balance between the water. This is a receptor, a type of protein that's an essential part of the communication infrastructure of the cell. They receive messages. So that there is no unnecessary chatter inside the cell. That's not just any asteroid. That's the asteroid that probably wiped out the dinosaurs. Rabies, the deadliest virus on Earth. Proteins bind to other molecules, like keys fit into locks. This way, they make all kinds of things happen in cells, from providing structural support to moving materials around and communicating important info like too much of this molecule incoming or intruder alert. This is a protein produced by the bacteria that we've living in fresh water with a body filled with chemicals is a risky business. Protist, this is a receptor, a type of protein that's an essential part of the communication infrastructure of the cell. They receive messages and trigger responses. Each of them is tailored to fit a very specific signal protein. Grab one of those proteins and drop it onto the matching receptor. That one isn't a match. There are lots of receptors here with different jobs. Try another one. Here we go. This is how the bacteria set themselves free. That protein is making a hole open in the surface of this protist. And you and I We'll snatch that concept right up. Living in fresh water with a body filled with chemicals, this is a receptor, a type of protein that's an essential part of the communication infrastructure of the cell. They receive messages and trigger responses. Each of them is tailored to fit a very specific signal protein so that there is no unnecessary chatter inside the cell.
This is a protein produced by the bacteria. This is a receptor, a type of protein that's an essential part of the communication infrastructure of the cell. They receive messages and trigger responses. Each of them is tailored to fit a very specific signal protein. Living in fresh water with a body filled with chemicals is a risky business. Pro Excellent. If we want these proteins to have the same effect on the giant protist, we need to scale them up. That should do it. Protein only works from the inside, but we can't wait until the protist finds it. Feeding time. The drone is your best bet for feeding the protein to the giant protist. Ugh. I hope someone has a mop and bucket. Time to deliver a protein-packed lunch. Oh, don't worry. Duck has been through worse. There we go. Bacteria would have kept opening holes until the protist died, but we just want our stuff back. Let's shrink the protist before it decides to have another snack. This protist can secrete a toxic substance to paralyze its prey before gulping it down. Luckily, it doesn't seem to work on humans or ducks. Ugh. I hope someone has a mop and bucket. That's a primordial black hole. These are thought to have formed just under a second after the Big Bang. This is an amino acid. They make up proteins, so they're incredibly important to your ability to be alive. Ah, you found bacteria. These bacteria look humble compared to the protists, but they spread everywhere, thanks to their clever survival strategies.
shrinkagen capsule is unlocked and ready. Let's head back to the human realm. We still have something to do in the mountain realm. Where were we? Right, restoring order to the city. No more outsized bath toys around. Knew I forgot something. Uh-oh, I've detected more abnormal shrinkagen behavior. But this one is odd. It's not a creature. It seems to be more of a strange fog. Let's check the city, but be careful. Here we are back to our regular size. So these are spores, packets of genetic material, like millions of plant seeds. Only the few that reach warm, dark and damp surfaces will grow. If you don't get rid of them, the flooded city will be a fungi forest in no time. If the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, then ATP are the fully charged batteries coming out of it. Ah, giant fungi. That certainly is a problem. Fungi grow collecting the mushrooms one by one won't help. All these spores will just make more of them. Only a small percentage of fungi grow mushrooms, which are the fruit of the fungi. They produce and keep the spores that can seed new ones. Careful, only a few percent of fungi are truly poisonous, and red cap mushrooms are... This fluffy balloon must be a puffball mushroom filled with spores. Instead, this one is bread mold, one of the most common fungi. It's what you see on stale bread and rotten fruit. This one is bread mold. One of the, mo the mushroom is visible above ground, but the rest of the fungi is growing underground. That part is made up of many long strands called hyphae that branch out in a network to collect resources. Sometimes you can even see this above ground. Welcome back to the insect realm. See anything? Interesting. Lichen is an example of fungi forming collaborative relationships. This fungus can fling its little orange orbs full of spores. Vast networks of tiny fungi threads can stretch between trees, providing access to nutrients. Good. We can get some more detail from here. My sensors say these spores carry a negative charge. That means their molecules have more electrons that are balanced out by their nuclei. That negative charge creates static that helps blue cheese. One of the ways in which humans intentionally eat mold. A patch of mold is an intricate network of thin strands that connect to one another, creating a much larger surface area for collecting nutrients than a single slab of mushroom. Oh dear, this is not a good place for a city. 
Good thing the wave didn't hit these bird's nest mushrooms. Normally, when a raindrop hits the nest, the egg-like spores are knocked up to one meter away. Mushrooms are incredible recyclers, breaking down dead organic matter and making the nutrients available to living plants and animals. The thread-like pieces that grow from mushrooms are called hyphae. They secrete enzymes to break down organic material, then absorb the nutrients that are released. Some hyphae can also produce spores. When negatively charged particles touch something that conducts electricity, the extra electrons jump ship and travel through the metal, creating a static shock. Thankfully, Duck has a tool called an electrostatic collector that has positively charged plates. Since negatively charged things are attracted to positively charged things, nicely done. The electrostatic collector works great here, but if we want to gather up all the spores in the city, we're going to need a lot more power than the lab can supply. They want to tell us something. Welcome back to the bacteria realm. We're inside one of the fungal cells called hyphae. This is the part of the fungi that does the growing, so it needs quite a bit of energy. See if you can... F each cell has many of these ribosomes where proteins are created based on the instruction. Each cell has many of these ribosomes where... The Golgi apparatus, that's this stack of flattened pouches. This is the endoplasmic reticulum, a complex structure responsible for many essential functions within the cell, including processing of proteins. Here we are, mitochondria, powerhouses of the cell. They're responsible for turning nutrients. This is the nucleus of the fungi cell, which contains most of the fungi's DNA. Very important, but not a power source. You found a space shuttle. These were retired in 2011, but they're still useful for our space videos because they're so recognizable. Each cell has many of these ribosomes where proteins are created based on the instructions stored in DNA. Hold on, is that grain of sand conscious? What's the consciousness lab been doing all this time? Here we are, 
mitochondria, powerhouses of the cell. They're responsible for turning nutrients into energy that the cells can use. A fungi cell like this has many mitochondria to produce all the energy it needs. This is the nucleus of the fungi cell, which contains most of the fungus DNA. Very important, but not a power source. This is the nucleus of the fungi cell, which contains most of the fungus DNA. Very important, but not a power source. This is the endoplasmic reticulum, a complex structure responsible for many essential functions within the cell, including processing of proteins. A battery should give us power, but it might need to be a lot bigger. If the ship doesn't fit, rescale it. That's not quite right. It needs to be even bigger. That should be more than enough power. Now Duck can grab it and use it for the drone. And here we are. Wow. 
That sprawl cloud has really spread from... Well, use the drone's vacuum beam to pull in that mitochondria and power up. We are on the surface of one of those spores. Hmm, looks like we need to devise a solution. Air is a mixture of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and small amounts of other gases like CO2. Luckily, it's not very reactive, so it won't suddenly decompose and rearrange into new molecules with other atoms. But we can change that. Oh, look, a duck coin. Probably doesn't scale well. Air molecules have stable chemical bonds, so their electrons are arranged in a way that keeps their atoms together. If we could disturb their electrons, we could create new reactive molecules, molecular cannonballs, to shoot at the cell walls of our spores. That's water vapor. If we could collect all the water out of the air, the fungi would shrivel up and die, along with everything else. So that's not the best way of dealing with our problem. That's almost everything. Now we just need to destroy those spores before we shrink the fungi and get on with our lives. That's water vapor. If we could collect all the water out of the air, but nitrogen is not as aggressive as oxygen. Spores have a protective wall made up of layers of proteins and sugars, like an organic armor. We need to find a way to pierce through it to keep them from dispersing further and growing into new fungi. Nitrogen is not as aggressive as oxygen when it comes to electrons, but it can create reactive molecules with oxygen. Nitrogen is not as aggressive as oxygen. That's water vapor. If we could collect all the water out of that's water vapor. If we could collect all the water, oxygen tends to really hold on to its electrons. If we break oxygen molecules, the atom. One way to break oxygen molecules would be to put up an electric field that overpowers the strong pull of their nuclei. I have the perfect tool for this. See how the wall look. That oxygen molecule broke through the cell wall. With the extra power from the mitochondria, we can create more of those molecules and get rid of the giant spore cloud too. Okay, now that we have a way to gather the spores in one area, a way to punch holes in their walls, and enough power to execute this on thousands of them, I think we're ready to clean up in the mountain realm. Ready to zap some spores? The electrostatic collector is automatic, so all you have to do is press the trigger. Good job. You've cleared up the spores, so we won't have any more giant mushrooms sprouting up. Let's shrink these and be done with it. That's the last one. Well done. The rubber duck. Ah. Yes, let's take care of that as the last order of business and call it a day. We have some shrinkage and left over. Go ahead and use it on the rubber duck. Let's take one more look at the human realm just to be sure. But I think we're finally in the clear.
Everything looks good to me. That was a wild ride. I can't wait to evaluate all that data. My next experiments will go so much better than those bloopers in the past. Are you calling me a blooper? Hmm. So there is something I haven't really told you up until now. Remember I said things can get tricky with shrinkogen? Well, this is how I know. But you were supposed to be locked away. The other ducks tried to warn you I was close. I just couldn't stay away when I noticed that beautiful creature out on the lake. You mean the big rubber ducky? We've already put it back to normal where it belongs. What? How dare you? I will unplug you once and for all. Oh, thank you, guys. Quick, the ducks brought us enough for one last blast. <laughs> that was close. Note to self, no more duck experiments. Welcome to the Kurzgesagt Scale Theatre. I used some extra shrinkogen to make a little spot where you could watch some videos of my past adventures. You can even invite your friends. Just press the lower face button on your controller to access the menu.